Here's a problem that Professor Catherine Kosak solves um, by hand in a highly recommended video. The idea is that we've got some data about the time that uh, a recurrence of a tumor occurs after chemotherapy. We want to have a frequency distribution of this data. In this video, rather than working it by hand, we're going to look at this the tools that are available in R to do the job. So let's pull up a copy of R. Uh, so here it is. We'll need to use an R console. Uh, let me just clear that data for a minute. We will uh, uh, we'll, we'll use a text editor. We'll just use the text editor that's right in R, but you could use any text editor and, and paste your commands into the console. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is wrangle the data. That is, we need to get the data into R so it can begin to manipulate the data. Once the data is in R, then we have a lot of flexibility available to us. So let's begin by, because we're lucky here, this data is in an electronic form, so we can just simply copy that data and uh, paste it into our text editor uh, and then we're going to need to process this so it becomes uh, usable by R. So we'll need to turn it into a vector. We'll use the concatenate command, uh, which is just C. And then we'll separate each of these data points with a comma. We will then want to save that data in a, an, an object. I'm just going to call that object data, but this name could be anything that you would want it to be, anything that you choose it to be. Um, notice that that really this is considered as one very, very long line, but it was would be hard to read. So in the script, I've just started a new line each time, and R is going to be able to recognize that uh, since the parentheses didn't end up on this line, that it needs to read all of this data. So there we're creating that data. If we, if we take that script that we've created, copy it and paste it into the console, in R that's very easy, you just highlight it and click run and it puts it down here. Then now we've created this object called data and any time that we ask R to look at data, then it has that, that information that we had from the original problem. Oops, you're not able to see that. <laughs> Let me show you where it is. Uh, there, it's happening right here. Okay, so when we highlighted that and, and ran it, it moved it down into the R console, actually ran that data, created an object called data. So anytime R looks at data, it now sees that vector with all of that um, information in it. Now, since we now have the data in R, I'm going to move this up so that we've got more viewing room and it might be interesting to to sort the data so I'm going to build another object called data.s which and, and this illustrates how powerful R is once you've got the data available as an object in R. I can just sort that data create this object called data.s if I run that information then I've got this this object called data s now and if I look at data data s then the there the data all the data is but it's sorted there are a couple times that we had a 1 and then we get up to a 59 at the end now as professor Kosak did in her video we need to calculate the range it would be nice to calculate the range of this which is going to be the maximum value that's in our our data uh, minus the minimum value. Now we know that the maximum value was, was 59 and the minimum value was 1. But if we had a very, very large data set, this kind of a command would be useful to have. Now if we wanted to have five classes, then we'd need to divide that range by five. That would tell us what the class width is going to be. But it's important that we round that up. There's a nice command in R called ceiling if we take the ceiling of that, then it will take whatever that value is and then move it up to the next higher integer. 
That is, if this if range divided by five is not an integer, then it will move then it will move that up to the next higher integer. A nice feature of writing a script is that you can annotate the script as you go along. You can put notes out to the side saying what it is that you're intending to do here. That's a nice reminder to you later on if you need to look at the script again to understand what happened. And it is very helpful in telling anyone else who's reading what you did uh, what you intended to accomplish with the command. Now we'd like to create a vector that contains where the breaks are uh, for these classes. Since our lowest value was 1, let's start our first break at 0 0.5 and then we want to go up to some particular value. To make sure that we get up to that top value, let's take the 0 0.5, our starting position, plus we're going to have 5 uh, classes, so 5 times the, the uh, class width. And then we're going to step that up. We're going to start at 0 0.5 and go up to this value and step up each time by whatever the, uh, uh, the class width is. So now that we've got those breaks available, let's build something that <clears throat> it's got the command in R is called cut. It will take this data and assign to each element in that data uh, a qualitative variable, it, uh, a qualitative value. It'll assign it to each one to the appropriate class that it needs to be in. So what we need to do is is tell cut what data set we're looking at, what numerical data set we're looking at. Tell it what the breaks are, and then we're going to say that right is false, meaning that that if something is ends up on the right hand boundary of a of a of a uh, class width that it will go into the next higher class. Now because data cut is a qualitative variable we can just look at the table of data cut. Uh, so let's highlight our script and run the script. It goes along and now says that data cut, uh, the table for that is between 0 0.5 and 12.5 we have six elements between 12.5 and 24.5, 10, 5, 13, and 8, as listed there. So it's going to be useful for us to have that data, that frequency table, saved as a, oh, hang on. It's going to be handy for us to have an object containing that, uh, that frequency table. Now, a relative, uh, a relative frequency table, instead of looking at the count for, <clears throat> for each number of elements in each class, it looks at, uh, at how, uh, it looks at the percent of each. So it now becomes very easy to create a relative frequency table because we just need to divide each element in the frequency table by the number of elements that are in the data set. Length of data really will calculate that amount for us. And so then we can ask to, to uh, print the relative. Notice that, that in line 13, what it does is store that, that uh, table uh, in, into this object called data.rf. If we just ran the script up to uh, line thir 13, we wouldn't see the command because we haven't asked it, we haven't asked R to tell us that. But now if we highlight all of that and uh, run the script, then then notice what happens. Let me pull this up so you can see the the output there. Of course we calculated the the just the table for the data cut. And that was 6, 10, 5, 13, and 8. And now we're looking at the, the relative frequency, which are those values divided by the total number in each value. And so we've got those five uh, percentages, or, or those decimal fractions, that represent uh, the relative frequency um, in each case. So while we're right here, let's do one more thing. 
Let's look at the cumulative relative frequencies. There's a nice command in R that handles that. You see, once you have a frequency table, the cumulative sum command, come sum, will, will produce a cumulative uh, frequency table. This is a, a cumulative frequency, not a cum relative cumulative frequency. So let's uh, highlight our data and run that. There I've highlighted the script again and running it, and there we have the cumulative sum. Notice that uh, in the first category we used to have 6. Now in the first and the second categories we have 16. In the first, second, and third categories we're going to have that 16 plus 5 is 21, and we're going to have uh, that 21 plus 13 is 34, and the 34 plus 8 is 42. And we can do just a little quick check here, down here. I'd, I'd, I'd just like to check and see what the length of data is. And sure enough, it's 42. The total cumulative value is 42. Of course, we can easily calculate the cumulative relative sum as well. So let's highlight our script and run that again, have it do all those calculations. And now notice what we've got is uh, the cumulative relative sum starts out uh, with uh, the value in the, the first class, and then it adds that value to the second class. That's the cumulative sum of the first two classes, the cumulative sum of the first three, the cumulative sum of the first four, and the cumulative sum of all of them. Notice how powerful R becomes once you get the data available in R, then you can do all kinds of manipulations and investigation of the, the data that's involved. I highly encourage you to compare what we've done here with a couple videos from uh, Professor Kosak and, and see how the doing it by hand compares so well with the doing it in R. And sense that if this data set was very large, that, uh, that doing it in R becomes much more advantageous. And also the fact that we can, can highlight what we're doing so we could share with somebody else what our thinking was on what happens uh, as we do the calculations. Okay, see you next time.